So before we plot anything, we need to define the data that we're going to use to actually plot the graph. So let's do a two-dimensional plot of the function y equals x cubed. So I'm going to define x as uh, linearly spaced numbers between minus 10 and 10 with a step of, well, let's have 101 points. And then I'm going to define y as x cubed. Notice the use of the dot to do element-wise um, power. Okay, so I've got my x and y. Now, if I open up the plots tab, and I need to, I need to actually bring up the uh, uh, the workspace as well to see my variables. Now, if I bring up the plots tab, you'll see that it's not really letting me do anything right now. It's I can't select anything. But as soon as I select any variable, even a single variable, it already lets me do something. So let's do a plot of y. So I'm going to press the plot button here. And uh, I, I actually get a separate window, a separate figure window that uh, shows up with the function. And I can actually uh, put it in in here, like so. So essentially, I kind of, uh, I get it to replace the, um, I get it to take part alongside the other windows. And that's easier for us to, to be able to see what's actually going on. So I have my plot and uh, essentially I can uh, see that uh, the, well, the y-axis is correct, but the x-axis was actually chosen just from the number of uh, points that I gave it. So I gave 101 points and MATLAB kind of rounded up the, uh, the number of uh, elements on the x-axis. So that's why I get 120 elements. That's why I get some uh, some wasted space here and uh, to fix this I need to select both X and Y So I hold the shift button or you can hold the control button and select both X and Y and now do Exactly the same plot thing and you'll see that now the values range from minus 10 to 10 y you might notice that the uh, This plot has replaced the previous plot. That's that's because we have a reused figure chosen here. If we had new figure and we press the plot button, uh, we would get a separate figure. So once again, I get a separate window. Yeah, I can I can kind of put it in here and it becomes a separate tab in the set of figures that I've got. So uh, plenty of options for uh, the kind of two dimensional graphs that you can do. There are histograms, pie charts, uh, log scaled axes, and that sort of thing. And um, you can explore this on your own. We're gonna do a 3D plot now. So to do a 3D plot, I'm going to define something called a mesh grid. A mesh grid is essentially like just like a range from one value to another, but this range is two-dimensional. So I'm going to define the values x and y, and they're going to be this mesh grid construct. I'm going to go with uh, a range from minus 10 to 10 with a step of 0 0.5. So minus 10 to 10, and then I'll, I'll do exactly the same for the y-axis as well. So uh, what I have now is I've redefined uh, X and Y, and each of these is now a 41 by 41 array. So there are two-dimensional arrays, not one-dimensional. Essentially, uh, it's like an array going from minus 10 to 10, but it's repeated 41 times. And the reason why we need to do this is because we're doing a surface plot, and to do a surface plot, I want to calculate the Z value. So the Z value in this case uh, is going to be, let's have sine x multiplied by the hyperbolic sine of y, for example. So I have z as 41 by 41. If I select it, I can press the surf button to uh, do another plot. I'm going to uh, put it in here. So this is the three-dimensional plot that we got from the data. And you'll see that as you select different elements here or different sets of elements, the range of plots that you can do up here in the listing actually changes to only the available one. So it actually takes into account the shape of the uh, array or several arrays that you've selected and only offers the relevant options.